guys, Human Eaton here, Dragon Farmer coach and athlete. And welcome back to Dragon Farmer's YouTube channel. Today, we will be discussing the most common mistakes and errors that I've noticed lifters making while training chest and how to fix them. Okay guys, so one of the most prominent issues I've noticed with lifters while training chest is elbow position. Small variations in elbow position can completely change the area of focus and even lead to severe injury. The two most common errors I've noticed are the elbows either being too high or too low. I'll use the bench press as an example. If the area of focus is indeed the chest and your elbows should always be right here at about 45 degrees. This is where the chest will be the most heavily involved and it's also the safest position will lead to the least likely risk of injury. If your elbows are tucked in right here at your side, the triceps become the primary movers. This is called a close grip bench press. And the primary focus here becomes the triceps, not the chest. This position can be very beneficial for developing strong, massive triceps, but be mindful of wrist position, all right? Each hand should be about 10 inches apart for this movement, because placing the hands too close can cause a tremendous amount of wrist strain and elbows as well. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to perform this movement to stay safe. This is a close grip bench press, and the primary focus is gonna be the triceps. After this, I'm gonna show you the way it should be done with the elbows at 45 degrees if your goal is primarily chest recruitment, okay? So during a close grip bench press, you want your grip narrow, but not too narrow. Like I said, too narrow can lead to wrist and elbow issues. Basically, you're gonna drop the bar down to your lower pec, upper abdominal region. Keep the elbows tucked in, like I mentioned, and drive forward through the elbows. All right, guys, so that was a close grip bench press. Just keep in mind that the elbows and wrists can be under a lot of uh, stress during that movement. So please be mentally aware and conscious of these particular issues. And if you do begin to experience any discomfort or pain, stop and widen your grip, okay? Now, the second position I see a lot of people doing is forcing the elbows too high. Again, 45 degrees is where you wanna be to emphasize the greatest overall chest contraction. With your elbows all the way up here at 180 degrees, you're placing too much tension on the shoulders. The shoulder pec tie-in is literally in its most vulnerable position and the risk of injury to the shoulder or pec is magnified. Some people like to do it this way to place more emphasis on the upper pecs. For example, there's actually a movement called the guillotine press, where the elbows are basically at 180 degrees like I just described, and the bar is lowered directly beneath the chin. I'm definitely not a fan of this movement for obvious reasons, but I'm going to show it to you just to show you what you should be staying away from. So during what you would call a guillotine press, your elbows are basically at 180 degrees and you would lower the bar all the way down with your elbows all the way out that way, as low as you can, right below your chest and then press back up. And that is what's considered a guillotine press. Again, I'm not a fan of this movement just because it places the shoulder and pec tie in a very precarious position. And there are way too many other exercises actually intended for upper chest development that won't increase risk of injury. All right, guys, so that particular movement with the elbows up at 180 degrees, just not worth the risk of injury for me. So for overall chest development, keep the elbows at 45 degrees during your presses. I'm going to demonstrate how to correctly do that for you now. So for a traditional bench press, where the focus is not the triceps or the upper pecs, rather overall chest development, like I've been saying, you wanna keep the elbows at about 45 degrees, okay? This is what a proper press should look like. Lower the bar, 
to your lower pecs, upper abdominal region. You see my elbows are about 45 degrees. They're not all the way up here at 180, and they're not tucked in next to my body. From here, just drive forward and repeat. Okay, right there, your wrists, elbows, and shoulders are in the safest position. And on top of that, you're getting a lot more overall chest, uh, chest recruitment from that movement. Okay guys, so we've gone over elbow position. The second thing I've noticed is shoulder position. When training chest, your ultimate goal should be to limit shoulder and tricep involvement as much as possible. You obviously can't completely remove either, but the goal is to place as much overall emphasis on the chest as possible. All right guys, so the bench press is not the only exercise where any of these tips can be utilized, okay? So here we are at the hammer strength chest press. I'm gonna demonstrate how the same exact features that I demonstrated over there can be done here as well. Okay, so we just discussed how important it is to remove your shoulders as much as possible from the movement when the goal is to emphasize your chest. And an easy way to remove the anterior deltoids from any chest press is to place an arch in your lower back. Force the shoulders backwards and stick your chest out, okay? So I'm gonna demonstrate that for you guys now. Keep your butt back. Don't let your butt slide forward. As you arch, it's gonna wanna come forward a little bit. Make sure your butt stays back against the pad, okay? Place a deep arch in your lower back like this, okay? Stick the chest out, shoulders back, deep arch in the lower back. Just like that, and press forward. Again, notice how my elbows are at 45 degrees, just like we discussed over there on the bench press. They're not all the way up here, and they're not all the way down here. That 45 degrees. Chest out, shoulders back, arched, 45 degrees. All right, and that is how you place the most overall emphasis on chest during any of these movements. You incorporate these two major points in your next chest session, I guarantee you, you'll notice the immediate difference in the pump and stretch you get. And you'll notice a lot more detail and development in the very near future. All right, guys, so that's it for today's tip. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time for the next one.